Good afternoon, everyone. So, big news, Apple has recently crossed the $3 trillion market cap threshold. That's trillion with a T. This is big news for both Apple and the stock market in general. This is a huge, huge milestone. And um, I think it's you know high time I did a little bit of a a little bit of a coverage on Apple and where I stand with it personally, and just give them their due credit that they deserve for what they have accomplished. So, Apple, first of all, they were already a very high revenue company 10 years ago. And generally speaking, when you're projecting what you know growth might be for a company that already has $170 billion in revenue, you would expect some kind of a slowdown. Well, every time they've had a little bit of a back step, you think, okay, this is where it happens. This is where Apple finally, you know, stops growing at the rate that they've been growing. And then they follow it up within a couple years with just an absolute banger of a year. 2018 almost 16% revenue growth. 2021, over 30%. And, you know, in between, a lot of uh, mid to high single digit percent revenue growth. Um, They're absolutely smashing anything resembling inflation, GDP growth, what have you. Apple just seems to be a company where that that idea that the bigger they get, the, the slower their growth will eventually have to be, It just feels like they play by a completely different set of rules than anybody else. It is crazy to me, okay? So just to give some credit to Apple there. Um, Now, equally, if not more impressive, is the fact that they grow their earnings and cash flow from the mid $1 to over $6 on, in terms of their EPS, which is 4X on that. Again, extraordinarily impressive bottom line growth and um, the spread between earnings and cash flow has been you know pretty pretty consistently small um, th- there's a really strong correlation there and that shows me that you can pretty well count on their earnings numbers to be to be a, a good representative of their actual profitability in terms of like cash in cash out how much money they're actually making and it's not just accounting manipulation etc now what they what what partly drives that um, bottom line growth is this extremely consistent commitment they've had over the last decade especially towards this um, towards these buybacks they love to reward their shareholders with buybacks now granted their price um, you know they're buying back expensive shares in a lot of cases because they trade tend to trade at a premium multiple. But nonetheless, um, they've got a lot of excess cash, and this is a tax-efficient way for them to reward their current shareholders, and so that's probably why they do it. They do have a dividend as well, but that seems to be like a much smaller slice, Uh, although they do consistently grow the dividend as well, okay? So... Through those things, they consistently reward their shareholders, and it's just one of those, you you lock in some shares of Apple, you just hold on to them forever, and just trust the um, very, very committed customer base, and the solid stewardship, and A-OK, you're good to go. Now, I will say there will be a point where Apple will have a CEO that is not named Tim Cook, and, you know, things could always change. But they have seemed like a very good bet in a lot of ways for a lot of time. Now, when you look at a basic DCF calculation for Apple, if you just assume that the next decade plays out sort of similarly to the previous decade, um, go with a standard 10% discount rate, uh, don't factor in the balance sheet at all, you come out with a fair value of very close to $140. And surprisingly enough, that people who have looked at um, the timing of when Warren Buffett and the Berkshire common stock portfolio seem to add shares of Apple, 
it's around this point or lower seems to be when they add. And that seems, you know, to mean that they're probably making some kind of assumptions that basically Apple will just continue on into the future the way they have in the past. And that's fair enough. Now, we're pretty far past the 140 level in terms of stock price for Apple right now. But as you know, uh, what goes up doesn't always go up forever. Uh, I think 2022 taught a lot of permables that lesson. But what is a what is a you know price we might want to pay as um, as value investors for Apple? So we have to be case by case on this. All right. So I'm going to treat Apple the way I think Apple deserves to be treated in this way. So. We have some analyst estimates that tell us, well, most of the next few years should be mid, uh, mid to high single digits to low double digits with one kind of lower mid um, single digit year there for some reason. And this is just kind of an average of, and you, as you can see, the number of analysts over the next couple of years is you know, 43, 40, and then it kind of declines as to how many analysts project out this far. So it's gonna get, probably less and less accurate and more and more skewed to the opinions of just a handful of people the further you look out. Analyst estimates always a grain of salt, but they can be helpful as a starting point because these people do follow the companies very closely and it's what they do professionally. Um, but again, grain of salt, they may have a rosier outlook or a bias or something. Um, so keep that in mind. So previously, my own assumptions with regards to Apple have been um, mid to upper single digit growth, something like seven and a half or eight percent would have been what I would have said for EPS or free cash flow. Okay. So just to give you kind of a preview of both of those. And, um, you know, I would have said it'll, it'll drop off a little bit over the following 10 years, but I think still probably be, you know, above inflation or, um, U.S. GDP growth, etc., because I, I think you know they'll have other opportunities further into the future, more international, um, as other per capita GDP grows in other parts of the world. So, giving them some credit for that, I was coming up with like a pretty much an intrinsic value of around a hundred dollars is what I previously remember coming up with, and this is basically how I got there. So, I mean, the actual number here is coming out to ninety-seven fifty, but maybe my assumptions were a hair different here or there back in the past but basically i was saying okay call it a hundred bucks that's where i'm considering adding apple into the portfolio now you might be saying well hey you know if buffett and berkshire seem to be adding at 140 what's the big idea saying 100 and you know that has made me you know somewhat want to reevaluate and so I, I think to myself, you know, is there some midpoint? I mean, is there some kind of, can I, can I bump up my expectations a bit and see where that comes out to? Now, for 140 to work, we would have to be, I mean, with a 10% discount rate, we would have to be assuming that the next decade plays out like the last. Now, even though... Um, you know, maybe that that seems to be something that Apple has managed to do in spite of people saying they can't previously and, you know, they've beaten expectations in the past. I still think, yes, at some point, the rules do need to start to apply to Apple in some shape or fashion. So I still want to be more conservative than just assuming they can continue permanently into the future, right? Especially because stewardship could change um, there could be other, you know, other factors in play. Um, you know, there aren't as many places left in the world where people don't already have the iPhones. So how many new customers are, I mean, there still are a lot, right? But that number, that, that, that piece of the pie in terms of world population that Apple already isn't in the hands of is shrinking, right? So I, 
I I looked at maybe splitting the difference between myself and you know my assumptions and what I think the Berkshire assumptions might be, and came into the maybe one twenty ish range as um, as a point for at the very least to start looking at it a lot more closely as like maybe a provisional target. So I have it watch listed in that area because I think that's the point where I need to look at it and say, is this an opportunity to have potentially in, I mean, in a lot of people's opinions, the highest quality large cap business in the world at what is potentially a very steep discount compared to what it normally would be because there's there's the moat um a very high roic which i didn't get into um the again cult-like commitment from their customer base just the overall um the safety of it as well because of how um basically how like inelastic they are right like if they say in the words of uh marlo from the wire price the bricks going up whereas the brick means the iphone you say it's going to go up five percent ten percent what have you as long as you're not saying it goes up you know to ten thousand dollars for an iphone i think people will probably pay a little bit extra so if they need to raise prices or whatever to you know keep driving up that bottom line they can they have that ability. So Apple has a lot of levers they can pull to continue to outperform. And so maybe it's worth being a little bit more generous to them in my assumptions. So that's where I'm at. Like my previous uh, target to where I was probably going to be adding them was 100. However, I have a watch listed at 120 where I will take a much closer look at everything and make a a final judgment if they ever dip into that territory again granted you know it could be that they never drop that low again however i think we all learned the lesson in 2022 especially with companies like meta and um like uh, paypal etc that companies can come way down from their all-time highs and these are all-time highs for apple right now so time will tell ladies and gentlemen uh just wanted to give some props to the what is by many considered to be the goat of stocks and tell you where i'm personally at with them take it easy everyone have a wonderful afternoon and by the way discord in the description if you want to talk about it press the join to be a member and like comment subscribe all that good jazz i am out of here